Hello and welcome to the Bronimo Music YouTube channel. My name is Dan Barrow. I'm a school teacher, music teacher from North London. I teach secondary school uh, level students and I do specialise in quite a lot of music technology. I use Logic Pro and Logic Express to teach current version number nine. Uh, it is quite a complicated piece of software and I have been asked online if I could make some simple uh, starter videos for the complete beginner. So this is going to deal with uh, a number of starting points. We're going to talk in this video about the windows of Logic. We're going to look specifically at four different types of windows. The arrange window, the transport bar, the mixer window and the piano roll. We're going to have a little look at what they're for and how to call them up using keyboard shortcuts. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get going with probably the most common and most frustrating problem that you'll come across time and time again when you're teaching about logic. I call this problem, Sir, it's not working. <clears throat> Here is your empty uh, desktop and logic's down there and the student is clicking and clicking and clicking and there's nothing there so it's not working well it is working because if you go up here you can see that logic pro is open it is running but you've closed all your windows by mistake happens all the time the way to get around this is to go to file and open recent if you were working on a recent track as i was or go to new and let's just create a new project together for today, I'm going to go down to instruments, which just collect, uh, it just automatically creates a lovely range of instruments. It's great just to get going and recording and trying out different things. It's really good. Let's click that. Now, it will always ask you if you want to save, first of all. My philosophy, yes, 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 always save. Keep saving, because if you work on something that's untitled and hopefully there won't be any crashes, but there is a crash or a power cut or something like that, you may lose all your work. So always save straight away. I'm going to call this Absolute Beginners 2 because I've had a go at this before. Okay, so now let's talk about windows in Logic. The first window that you see is probably the most important one. It's called the Arrange window. The shortcut for that is Command and 1. And if you want to close a window because you've got too many open, the C command for that, the shortcut is Command and W, which is a great way of getting rid of too many windows. But be careful, if you go too far, you will close your project completely. So what is the Arrange window for? Well, it's basically where you navigate all the main things about your track. For instance, the sounds that you want to use. If you change the track, you change the sound. <laughs> So, whatever you are selected here is what you're going to hear. Along the top here is what we call the ruler. So this is uh, time. As time passes in logic, it uh, counts it down in bars. So at the top here we have bars 1, 2, 3 and 4. If I press the space bar to play it, we see the playback cursor moving. But we don't hear any music because we haven't recorded anything yet. That's what we're going to do next. Just a quick word about this green region at, at the top in the ruler, which I can turn on and off by clicking. Look what happens to the cursor when it gets to the end of bar 4. It goes back to the beginning. So I call this the playback loop. Logic calls this cycle down here on the toolbar, sorry, on the transport bar. You can turn it on or off. One small point because it People, students do get confused by this quite often. You can move it by clicking inside it. You can stretch it or shrink it by grabbing the ends. I always recommend working from one whole number to the next. Students sometimes do all sorts of things like working between loops. One last uh, word of advice. Watch out for this. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to keep going and I've gone past the beginning and now it becomes zigzagged. Have a go at this yourself, see if you can work out what it means when it's zigzagged. Okay, well now uh, we've got a one bar loop set up on the playback loop, so let's record something. Um, if we go down to the transport bar here, uh, these buttons here uh, can rewind, or forward wind, or stop, or play, pause, record. Information here includes what bar we're currently in, what is the speed, the tempo, how many beats per minute, 
what is the time signature? This 16 here, I'll talk about separately. Also over here, we have something called the click, which I always think is quite useful to have. These other buttons, we don't need to worry about so much. So now I'm going to press the record button and I'm going to play lots of random black notes. Um, and this is a really fun way of starting logic with your students. When I click record, you'll hear four clicks and then we're in. Here we go. You notice that when I was recording, the ruler turned red and it kept going round and round the, um, the region. So every time I, uh, it went round and I could add more and more notes. Down here in the piano roll, as we call it, all the notes that I played appear as little squares, little rectangles. We call these note events. Let's get into the piano roll and uh, see how that works in a bit more detail. I like to work in the piano roll in its own window, and there's a shortcut for that. It's Command and 6. That brings it up nice and big. Here are all my note events that I played. Here is the keyboard which shows the pitches that I played at, high to low. Now along here on the piano roll is a grid with thick lines and thinner lines. There are four main lines there, and those are the main beats of the bar, one, two, three, and four. In between them, it's subdivided into four smaller uh, boxes and uh, these are called sixteenth notes. Now let's have a listen to the music that I recorded. I think we can agree that it's not uh, very satisfying to listen to. Uh, it's all a bit messy but uh, Logic can do something really really clever with this to make it sound good. It's a function and it's called quantize. This is how it works. Firstly, I have to select all of these notes. So the quick way of doing that is Apple and A. Or you could just take the mouse. When the note is selected, it turns black. Now up here, there is this drop down box. It says off at the moment. I'm going to move this. It's a big list, a big drop down list. We can ignore most of these. I'm going to go to 16th notes and click that and all the notes suddenly moved and if you looked really closely you'd see that they all are now sitting on precise 16th note lines. Let's have another listen to it, see how that's changed it. So my very random piece of music that I played just using black notes now sounds um, a little bit more satisfying because Logic has quantized these notes to put them in time. Have a go at this yourself. I would like to show you something else that you can do in the piano roll which is very cool and a lot of fun for the students to work with. When I recorded last time I played in real time that means that I used the keyboard and just played the notes myself but I'm also very keen on working in what we call step time sequencing and that's when you go into the piano roll and rather than playing the notes on the keyboard you use the pencil tool to draw in your notes and the reason I like this is because it will always put your notes in bang on the line and if it's on the line it's in time and you can see here that I've just started writing my own name now I'm just going to write the last letter of my name W and I'm going to use the pencil tool to do that and this is how it works I use a shortcut and I recommend you get your students to use a shortcut just press command that's all you need to do press command to get the pencil Now, that's not a very good W, I'm sure you'll agree, but uh, you could just see how I was using the pencil tool to click notes. If I click a note like this, double click, it will disappear. So it's a great way of putting notes in and notes out. Something to watch out for is that the mouse is quite sensitive in terms of where you put the notes. Can you see that it's changing as I move it around the notes? And if your student 
tries to move a note but grabs it too near the end this is what happens it gets really long and then if I went to the pencil tool now and put in another note it would be the same length as the last one so just something to watch out for is what the mouse looks like when you click it it turns into a bracket well I've done a not a great job at writing letter W uh, but that's okay I'm gonna press play now just to see what this sounds like Students absolutely love this. They've spent hours trying to write their names in and uh, trying to make them sound as uh, interesting as possible. Maybe we don't like the sound. We can change that. I'm going to close this window, Command and W. And I'm going to just take the region and I'm just going to move the whole thing down to, let's say we move it to the 70s kit. Changing the sounds. Let's have a listen to it. And I'm sure you agree, this can be a lot of fun uh, when you're starting to use logic for your students. Right, well, there's just a couple more things that I think uh, I'd like to show you. Um, uh, firstly, I'm going to do something um, quite effective. I, I, this region here, I'd like to put it exactly the same region on a different instrument as well. So I can copy and paste it. And again, there's a shortcut for this, very useful shortcut. You have to hold the ALT, the ALT button and you have to hang on to it. Don't let go of Alt and drag your region. Let's go up to the classic suitcase electric piano sound. Now, just if I let go of Alt, look at the yellow box. It changes to move and that will move it. Let's undo, Command and Z. Don't let go of Alt. Let go of the mouse. And now I've copied the same region. Um, Finally, the last window that I was going to introduce you to is the mixer, and that is Command and 2. This is where you can control the individual sounds of your instruments. Um, it's set up in quite a complicated way that I'm not going to explain, but I will point out a couple of very simple changes you can make. So press play. You can see there that there are two instruments there and the sound is coming in. Um, perhaps I'd like to turn down one of them so I can turn it down in volume and maybe turn the other one up a bit and perhaps I'd like to put one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side so I can turn this wheel here this is called panning put one on the left and one on the right and you're creating a nice stereo sound to your uh, initial music okay well as an absolute beginner, I hope that you've got some things you can use and introduce your students to. Please do email me at bronomomusic at gmail.com for any suggestions, comments, uh, requests for other videos that you might like uh, me to do for you. Not a problem. Uh, have fun and see you soon.